Hello everyone. So in this lecture, I'll discuss the molecular orbital approach to tetrahedral square planar complexes. So for tetrahedral complexes, what all uh, metal orbitals do we have? We have s orbital, we have p orbitals, we have dx square minus y square, dz square and dxy, dyz and dzx orbitals. And what are the symmetry of all of these? A1, T1, E, T2. Now, uh, let's say this is not T1, T2. Now, what, which, of, which symmetry orbitals actually involve in tetrahedral bonding? So, A and T2 symmetry orbitals can involve in tetrahedral uh, sigma bonding in our uh, tetrahedral complexes now that would mean i mean you will from the ligand group orbitals you will have one a1 symmetry orbitals and three t2 symmetry orbitals right from the ligand you have one a1 but two t2 so that would mean you have two let's say sets of T2 orbital from metal, one set of T2 orbital from the ligand. So you have total three sets of T2 orbitals. What are going to happen to this? One set will be purely bonding. One set will be strongly antibonding and one set will be slightly antibonding. What about the A1 orbitals? There is one A1 orbital from metal, one A1 orbital from ligand and hence you will have one bonding and one antibonding molecular orbital. So that is the normal case. Okay. Now let's take a look at the molecular orbital diagram. So you have E to E, then you have A1, and then you have another T2. From the ligand, you have A1 and T2. So the lowest energy orbital will be T2 followed by. A1 and this T2 will also have character from this T2 orbital also followed by two E non-bonding orbitals followed by another T2 but slightly anti-bonding this one uh, followed by A1 star followed by T2 star. This will have contribution from this also. This is strongly antibonding molecular orbital. So how do you memorize this? Uh, since this has A1 and T2 symmetry both, uh, uh, I, I, I hope I have not done any mistake in taking the lowest energy for T2. Just recheck once. I'll also uh, display it on your screen that T2 is lower energy or A1. So how do you memorize this? Obviously, for the antibonding, it is going to follow the order of the metal T2 star, A1 star, and T2 star. For the ligand group orbitals, I think it should be T2 then A1. I assume that's the correct way. Uh, so this also follows the metal uh, order. So memorize this. Uh, tetrahedral molecular orbital energy diagram as much as you can okay so this is your crystal field splitting for the uh, tetrahedral complexes as and as you can see this is very much less as compared to what you had seen in the case of uh, octahedral complexes and that is why 
we uh, know from crystal field theory that the tetrahedral uh, splitting is 4 by 9 times of the octet splitting that means very very much almost uh, 36 uh, uh, percent of the octahedral uh, splitting okay so that's all that is there to discuss in tetrahedral complexes now we'll move on to uh, octahedral complexes Okay, now let's take a look at these uh, square planar molecular orbital diagram. Now, in square planar complexes, all the ligands are uh, coming or all the ligands are approaching the metal uh, uh, in the same plane. So, let's say they are all present in the XY plane. So, what are molecular orbitals from the metal will be able to do, uh, in, uh, let's say, to interact with the ligand group orbitals? For that, let's take a look at the symmetry of each of the metal orbitals. So, you have S. Px, Py, Pz, dx square minus y square, dz square, dxy, dyz, and dzx. S orbital obviously has A1g symmetry. Two of the Px orbitals will have Eu symmetry. Pz orbital will have A2u symmetry. dx minus y square will have B1g dz square has a1g dxy has b2g followed by dyz and dzx i think this should have eg symmetry now what of these uh, eg a2u and b2g are the orbitals which do not take part in any bonding and are non-bonding orbitals. Uh, why I am saying so? Because they are those orbitals which are not oriented along any of the axis. And in square planar complexes, let's say you have this metal, you want the ligands to come from the xy direction. So those orbitals which are not in the xy along the xy axis they have been scrapped out now you might ask why dz square is present so the molecular orbital diagram for dz square or let's say the orbitals of the dz square are placed somewhat like this i wish i could show you this side okay so it's, it actually has orbitals along all the axes. It's not just about z square axis. The, obviously, the z square axis has more contribution. It has more uh, larger, uh, uh, you can say, probability of finding the electron along the z axis along these two loops. But there is still some amount of orbitals uh, present or some amount of uh, overlap possible along the x and y direction. And when the ligands approach, they can approach like this. And also, symmetrically also, it is allowed to be present. Okay. Um, yeah. So now let's take a look at the molecular orbital diagram. So you have the metal having multiple symmetries this time. You have B1G, you have B2G, you have A1G and you have EG. Then you have the A1G S orbital and then you have EU and A2U. From the ligand, what will you have? You will have four orbitals of A1G, EU and B1G symmetry. So here are those. A1G, EU and B1G symmetry. So how is the orbitals going to be arranged the lowest energy orbital will be a1g followed by uh, okay a1g will have contribution from here also followed by b1g followed by eu now eu comes from here Okay, now uh, from the metal uh, moving up, uh, we know EG is uh, non bonding and at the same time is B2G. So you will have two EG and one B2G non bonding. Next will be uh, 
A1G having slightly antibonding character. Uh, no, I think it does not have antibonding character. Yeah. Then it will have uh, B1G. Oh, this is going to have some contribution from here. Yeah. Star. Then there will be non bonding A to U. This one followed by A one G star and EU star. Now, how do you memorize this sequence? So, A1G has energy less than B1G has energy less than EU. Okay, you can memorize them alphabetically A, B, and then E. While going from, uh, while going from the, uh, I mean, after you are done with all the bonding orbitals, then you obviously have EG and B2G which are non-bonding, so they are going to be present here. Now, again, for the antibonding molecular orbitals from the metal side, A1G less than B1G, less than B1G star, less than A1G star, less than EU star. So, again, the first two is very straightforward, uh, alphabetically A and B. Now we just have to memorize this follows this is the same as this there is only one a1g star extra present in between b1g and eu eu b1g star and eu star in the case of square planar complexes again a to u is non-bonding so that is anyways going to be present there okay now okay that's all okay so that's all i wanted to discuss for the square planar complexes that is important for with respect to uh, net gate tfr and iit jam or any other phd entrance exam questions come from uh, very less questions have actually come from the molecular orbital theory of square planar complexes mostly it comes from the tetrahedral and most of it it's come from octahedral complexes so that's all that is there for in this lecture in the next video uh, i'll be discussing the correlation between 18 electron rule and the uh, molecular orbital theory and how 18 electron rule can give you an idea of the uh, uh, lesser or how the molecular orbital theory can give you an idea of how uh, satisfactory the 18 electron rule is for, for all the uh, types of complexes so let's say all the octahedral complexes